All right, we're out here. Um, we're about to put the 291R shock on, let's see if I can get that on the camera, on the VSET 10 Plus. Um, I said when I got this thing I would make a video of putting this sucker on. Um, I already did the front one a couple days back, so I wanted to make sure I had all the uh, tools ready to go so that, uh, you know, it'd be a quick install and I could kind of just talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, so I'm going to switch angles here, try to get the camera set up nice so you can see everything I'm doing, and then we'll get started and I will try to make this as, for as informative as possible. Okay, so here's the setup here. You can see that I've already got the front one on there. Nice and pretty. Got some parts here. You can see I already removed these caps here because I don't think you needed to know how to do that, but you just get a flathead and kind of pry them off. They're just glued on. Um, some of the tools that I'm using are gonna be, what size is this? Three fourths. So I believe this one goes here. Yeah, so that fits the swing arm, the three-fourths. And then I've got a 1316 for the bolt here. I think a 20 also fits it, but this fits it really good. Um, I've got a 764 that I'm using for these on a drill because I don't want to sit there with my Allen key set and unscrewing them. Um, definitely would get rid of the V-set Allen keys and get... These are husky, but just get a nice set of Allen keys. Uh, I'm gonna be using a drill, like I said. You can see I got the Dremel here in a little file. Probably won't need it, but on the front, I had to clean this up a little bit in here to fit the new spacers that I got. Um, got the torque wrench, because this is supposed to be torqued to 30 pounds. And these are the cool new spacers I got. These are off of Banggood. Um, they're 26 millimeter spacers and they fit perfect in there with these so you don't have to if you look here I don't know if you could see right there but there's kind of like an extra cheesy little spacer in there and it kind of offsets the shock but uh, the new ones they fit perfect in there sometimes you got to clean it up in here a little bit from that being loose or whatever but I think this back one's going to be a little smoother so I'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up right and then we'll get to work and I'll kind of talk about it as we're going. So I think I want to put this over here, let's see, sorry about that. Well, if I put it there you're not going to be able to see me take the brakes off and that might be helpful to somebody so let me just get behind it. You might see me sitting in some weird angles because I got a bad back, but um, it's all right. We'll be able to get through this. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to use my 764 here. I'm sure there's a metric size that fits too, but that's what I had. I'm just going to, I don't want to sit here, like I said, with my Allen key. Go ahead and put everything up here. It's good to have like a little tray. Typically, let's see if that's up there. Uh, I got my RC stuff going on over there and I'm on another project with a bunch of bolts in a magnet tray. But this is only four bolts, so it shouldn't be a problem. It's good to uh, take these up to Ace Hardware and get some hardened metal ones. Um, the stock ones aren't the best in my opinion. I'm also gonna need some blue Loctite over here to put this back on, so I might have to get up and go find that on my bench. So we're going to take this off, simple as that, take the four screws out. Next we're going to attack uh, the brakes here because you got to get those out of the way. Don't be afraid of these, it's just two bolts. I've got some guys putting up a fence behind me so it gets loud. Hopefully it doesn't, hopefully they don't get too crazy over there they're just kind of unloading the truck but yeah you got to take off these brakes here this is all to get to this here so you have a smooth job going on this is easy as you can see just take these out put 
putting all my bolts in one spot and being careful and thinking about where they're going. Then we're gonna pull this off. Just kind of lay it over here. That's fine. So good and free there. Probably should have cracked these loose when I had them on the ground, but they're not really that tight. Um, I'm gonna probably tighten them up more than they came. See, that wasn't much at all. That was almost ridiculous how loose that was. There's no reason not to go pretty tight there. It's not gonna put too much pressure on anything the way all this works in here. Pay attention to how you gotta get these out a certain length because you have to be able to get this out of there because that's actually a holder. It's holding the wheel in place in a line. You gotta take them out a certain amount, but pay attention to how the washers are, how these are on the inside. You're gonna have to put them back like that. Then the next issue we're gonna have is the motor wire here. So that's why I have this sitting here. And that's about the biggest pain of the whole thing is you gotta just get in here. It's not that bad. You gotta, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just, they're just little holders and you just bend them out. I've tried to do, take them out with, uh, you know, getting in here with the screwdriver and everything. And it's just easier just to bend them out or bend them and move them out of the way like this. And then you can get this out of the way. So you gotta kind of pull out the wire first, get it nice and loose so that when you go to pull on this, it slides right out. Then it's also good to make sure that you don't put too much tugging on this wire. It's probably not gonna hurt much, but I just don't like to let it hang there. So we're moving right along here, as you can see. Um, next thing I'm gonna personally crack loose, you could either go with these or with these. I'm gonna go with these just to get them out of the way. They should only be about 30 foot pounds because you don't need to get too tight in here because this still needs to be able to move. So I should be able to sit here and just kind of crack these loose, I'm hoping I don't have to stand up or nothing. Let's see. Yeah, these aren't too tight. So you don't gotta get too crazy. You're gonna wanna take these all the way off. Um, and I would put some lock tight on them personally when you go back on, because again, they're not, they do have lock washers, which is cool, but they're not that tight on there because this whole thing needs to be able to move. See if I can get over here. Ah, okay. Go ahead and wrench this off. It's really cool how they made these scooters. Um, it, comes, it comes apart very nicely. Uh, then we're gonna crack this loose. And we could actually wiggle these out at this point, but I'm just leaving them on there. Everything's nice and loose at that point. You see how easy this job is and you don't, it's not really something to be too intimidated by. This isn't that tight. Again, another place where you're gonna wanna, oh, okay. So I'm gonna need another Allen key for this side over here um, cause it's spinning on me. So let me go ahead and pause this and go find an Allen key cause it could take me a few minutes. All right, we're back. Um, this is a size four Allen key for both sides. So that was spinning a little bit on me. So I had to go grab the Allen key. Again, put some Loctite on that. You can put it everywhere. This has to come out. So what I typically do with this type of setup is I put something in the other side, kind of pound on it like that. You don't have to get too crazy. See, this is that extra little spacer that I'm just not a fan of because it throws the top part offset a little bit. So we got this out. I'm probably just gonna push this back through for now so I don't lose it. Put this in here. Kind of thread it in a little bit. Anywhere you can put bolts back. I probably should have just put the bolts back in here. That would have been a good idea, but Anywhere you can put the bolts back is a good idea so you don't lose anything. Now these kind of come right off. And this is shaped like a square here. And in here, there's actually bearings 
inside here. It's really well made. Um, take this right over here. Don't really need to take that one off. No reason to. You can leave this bar in if you want. So that's the old shock. Um, this is a pretty good shock. The front one is complete garbage in my opinion, but this one actually has some oil in it. From what I understand, it's got hydraulic oil in it. So I didn't mind this shock. I just have OCD in and want to match them up. So that's why we're going with the new shock. Um, what I need to go ahead and do next is I need to install the new spacers in here. So I've got to take these bolts out here. So I left them in there because I don't want to lose anything, but it doesn't really matter because I'm not reusing them. And then sometimes these come right out and sometimes you got to kind of tap them out. Like I'm going to have to go over to my bench and put something on one side of this. It can be anything, you know, you could do something like this and tap on it and it might just fall out. Um, but this isn't going to go through that hole, so it's better to find something close to that size. And you're going to have to tap these out if you want to reinstall these ones. Now, they don't, some of them, one of them on my other one just literally slid out. Like, I was taking it apart and pulling these off. These are just plastic, these little O-rings. But, see, these are even being a pain. So, I'm going to have to get behind this with a screwdriver or a pick a little bit and pull that off. But... Essentially what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to tap this out. So I'm going to put this on a flat surface and tap through here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of grease in there when I put the new one in so it slides in. And then I'm going to tap this one in. Um, I'm not going to show you that because, well, I guess you can come with me if you want. Let me see. I didn't think of this part ahead of time, but here we go. Got my RC table going on over here with all my stuff, so it's a little bit of a mess. But we're gonna use my bench here. Let me put you on this bar stool. See if I can get you set up where you can see me. And I'm just gonna use this here and tap this out of here. Probably just gonna hold it like that. So now I need to find something that I'm gonna use I can't remember what I use all right we're over here at the bench now um, we're gonna go ahead and tap this out now what I'm using is this here it seems to work perfect you're gonna have to find something but I'm gonna put it in here like that and this should blow right through that hole and I'm just gonna put something on the edge here so that I have pressure I'm gonna put it here like this and I'm just gonna tap Oh, dropped something. Almost there. This one's coming out a little bit harder than the other one. I didn't have to really hit on the other one like this. You can see I'm using wood here so I don't mess this all up. We're about, oh wow, this whole shim here is coming out. Yeah, see the other one didn't do that. Okay. So... Now this is out, that big old shim came out, but it feels loose, so I could just go boop. And then, we're gonna put this back. I'm gonna get a little bit of my grease over here. I like using marine grease, because it's good with water resistance. I'm gonna grease this up, so hopefully it will slide back in for me. Put some in there. Yeah, see it slid right back in with the grease. Then, I'll give you a better shot of these. So when you're looking them up on Banggood, you want the 26 millimeter one. A guy helped me, let me see. No, I got it, no, I got it right. So it says 26 millimeter, and it's got like, almost like a little bicycle on it. Um, these were not expensive, they were like three or four dollars but they fit perfect. So um, 
put, my fingers are already kind of greasy, but I'm just going to put a little bit more grease on this guy. And then hopefully it goes in pretty easy. I don't have to do too much pounding. Yeah, it already started. I already got it started, so hopefully I don't have to tap too much. I'm going to use the same thing that I took it off with to put it on. And I shouldn't have to do too much here. Well, it looks like I do need to use the table just a little bit. Now you could get away from doing all this if you just wanted to use the stock stuff and um, just use that stock washer. But again, I just didn't like it. Um, I like it to be flush. So that wasn't that hard as you could saw. I just greased it up and tapped it in. And then I got the spacers here. This is what makes it fit perfect. At least it did on the front. We'll see on the rear. So we got these, and we're going to go ahead and put these on here. And that's the perfect length to not have a spacer in there when you have it. Um, now i got to do the bottom. I'm not going to sit here and show you that because you already saw what it was. We'll start over here in a second with me installing it after I get those out. Alright, so we're about to install the rear shock, and I did find kind of an issue here. Um, with the rear that was a little bit worse than the back um, these bars actually don't come straight down they kind of come down like this so when you try to put this in this part fits perfect but when you slide these on kind of doesn't want to go up in there you could probably tap it in but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my file and these are plastic and I'm just going to take just a little bit off the top here so when this goes in it fits nice and snug um, I could do it here with this file like so um, and I probably will let me see my Dremel would make it a lot easier but I just want to show you how simple it is. It's not a crazy fabrication job. You could probably go grab your wife. It's plastic, so you could probably go grab your wife's nail file that she does her nails with. might take you a few more minutes than what I just did here in seconds. Clean this up. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of harder doing this on video with... You're trying to film what you're doing, but clean that up and then just see how it fits. So I got that shaved a little bit. Turn those to the top. I'm just about there. So a little bit more and I should be able to get that to fit. Um, I'm going to turn the camera off and just make it look nice and clean because that's just how I need to be about it. And uh, then I'll show you it sliding in. Okay, we're back. We got everything nice and filed down. It took about five minutes. I had to come over a few times and kind of just test fit it. Um, I'll show you where I'm at with it as far as filing. The back one needed a little bit more than the front did. But uh, let me see. You can see I just kind of filed that off right there so that it will slide in. Um, the best thing to do is to have the bolt kind of here like this and come over and after you filed it a little bit, just push it up in here. You can see it fits really nice now. Um, I still prefer filing this down other than using the stock ones with the little washer that's offset. I actually put this all back together and then took it apart again just to make sure it was all gonna fit nice and smooth. And I learned something kind of cool that I wanna share um, with you guys because I think it's important. But essentially just get these filed to where when you push it up it looks like it's all the way deep up in there. And then you just kind of hold it there. You should be able to, there we go. Got that through. And then you come I got a little hammer here and I just kind of give this a little to get it in and see that's in there nice and snug now 
it's not gonna not gonna create any kind of problems with uh, bumping and clunking and stuff like that like people have had in the past this is your rebound here so you can turn this up and it will actually slow down how fast the scooter comes back up at you that's what's so nice about these but what I learned when I put all this back together something was kind of off and I thought oh maybe you can't use these on this particular uh, on the back like you can use on the front and what I found is let me pull this off here so let me show you from this side this is very important what I'm about to show you this washer needs there's a little lip here and it needs to set over this lip so if it gets stuck down here and you're trying to tighten it something's gonna look off so you definitely want to check the spacing in here when you're putting this back together now personally I like grease so I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of grease on this washer here just to keep everything moving nice and smooth and on this so it does less damage to any kind of aluminum I want to get the grease off the threads here because I'm going to be putting some Loctite on there so I want to make sure that that gets cleaned up pretty good because I want the Loctite to dry. So make sure you don't get any grease on there like I just did. But um, grease that up a little bit. Putting some grease on here is actually going to keep it to stick where it needs to be up against that. So that's actually a good thing. I keep getting grease on these threads when I'm putting it back on. So definitely want to come through. Get all the grease out of here because it will prevent the Loctite from drying. So that's what I wanted to show you. Make sure that these are seated all the way up against this or you're going to have some issues. Move this back over here so I can get to work on this. So I need to walk over real quick and grab my Loctite. So I'm going to do that. So bear with me for a second. Found it. Because it's Loctite time. We're putting stuff back together. Got some of this. And we're going to find the bolt. This guy here to put back in here. But I'm pretty generous with my blue Loctite because it's not the strongest holding Loctite really. So I put a nice clump on there. Loctite now you want to let it kind of set overnight Takes a good amount of time to dry Up to where it works. I learned that with my RC cars I'd put it on there and it wouldn't really do anything if I went right out and used it, but if I wait overnight No issues, so We got the Loctite on There's no real torque spec on this guy here, but I'm just going to tighten it down. Nice and tight. Still has some pretty good movement to it. This just fell off the bottom. Okay. So, we got this on. Nice and snug. Not going to be clunking around in there. That's in right. This is in right. I'm going to slide this up to here. Bring this down to here. I'm personally going to grease this pin just because wherever metal is moving a little bit on something and there's friction I like to have some grease so I'm gonna put this through here lift this up Let's see if I can get that to go in okay so we're in see I just popped this out over here so this is where you got to check when you push this back through you gotta come over here and check the spacer and make sure it keeps going back into its little spot. So, got that all greased up, got the bolt in up top. This is pointing backwards so that we can do adjustments on it. Now, we're gonna slide this on. Again, check one more time that the spacers are all nice and flush. You shouldn't have to pinch it in or tighten it in to get it to work. Run your grease around this. You can even stick some grease in here. You can see where it's already started to wear the paint off. So it is a metal on metal.
problem in here. So grease is not a bad thing because we don't want to wear the actual metal out and make it sloppy. So got everything nice and set up, ready to just slide on. Everything should be ready to go. You shouldn't have to tighten anything together. Kind of do one of these to it. Make sure every all the little spaces look closed up. Then pretty much from there, you're doing real good. Um, if you got to this point, you did it. You made it happen. So I'm going to come in and just put a nice amount of blue Loctite in the bottom down here. Start putting these on either side. Just till I hit the, you're going to hit the uh, blue lock washer in here. And uh, that's when you got to get your tool out. Now, I'm going to just kind of snug it up here with my ratchet. Oh, can you still see what's going on? Yeah. I'm just going to come in and kind of hand tighten, snug this up. And you don't want to get crazy snugging this up because it does not take much pressure here at all. You don't want to create any kind of binding. So just kind of... I mean, if you don't have a if you don't have a torque wrench, the best thing to do is to focus on how tight it was when you took it off. And then what I do when I don't have a torque wrench is I tighten it to where I think it needs to go, like let's say there, and then I loosen it again to see if it felt like when I took it off. Oh, that was too easy. Let me give it a little more. Yeah, so that felt closer to where I took it off. But me, I have a torque wrench, so I'm just going to barely put it on here. And then I'm going to get my torque wrench out. Because I want to make sure it's all set up right. Got my torque wrench here. Loosen this out. They say 30 foot-pounds, so I loosen all the way out. Then you find the zero. It's going to start getting tight. That's about 20 there. So this next one around is going to be 30, and I'm just going to go a half a pound past that just because I don't think it's going to hurt anything. And I want to make sure I got at least 30 on it. So let's see if I can back this up. Put this on here, and this will click when I hit 30 pounds. So. Did a little click. That lets me know I'm at 30. 30 and a half with this torque wrench, actually, but. There it is. See? 30 pounds. So, I like having a torque wrench. They're 30 bucks at an auto zone, so I, I don't think it's a bad thing, purchase to make, and you're going to use it again at some point. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the whole setup. Everything's on now. Now it's just putting your back wheel on, which you'd have to do with the tire change. So really, all we did was we took these two bolts off here and these two bolts off here. And if you can do a tire change, you can definitely go ahead and take care of that. So now essentially, I just have to act like I'm finishing off the tire change here and put this wheel back on. Remember, this goes on the outside and this goes on the inside. Go ahead and line these up. And this wire goes on the inside. Brakes are still off. So you can get everything in where it needs to go. Now I'm just I just kind of finger tighten everything and make sure everything's going exactly where I want it to. Then when I have it here, I'm going to go ahead and tuck my wire in while I have everything loose because I don't know if for some reason I would need to pull it off. Now one goes all the way down the bottom. This part comes all the way up and there's this weird little bolt here that it kind of tucks into. And then it goes back down. And this is like this little wire thing's here to kind of protect. 
this part is being a little bit of a pain. Okay, so we're in. So then you take that, put that back where it goes. Actually, I need to pull this wire down here. Remember, it went up a little higher. Yeah, it was up, and then this came up this way. Okay. Tuck that in, tuck that in. The only thing you gotta do, it's actually good to have like a, a long screwdriver um, to push this back in, but I'm just gonna, yeah, that worked fine too. I just stuck this up against it and pressed like that. These little wire things, or these cable holders bend pretty easy. I like to tuck this one in a little. Okay, so that's going to keep everything out of the way from the tire when this is rotating. Next, we need the 1316 for this. Now, in my opinion, from everything I'm seeing here mechanically, you can go pretty tight on this because it's pressing up like this. It's not pressing in on the bearing. And I don't want my wheel coming off. So, I'm going to go... Oh, and with... When you tighten something like this, even a back wheel on a bicycle, it's good to tighten this one a little bit and this one a little bit and just kind of go back and forth, tightening them about the same amount. And it will keep the wheel more centered than if you just tighten one side, it will kick it off. So I'm probably going to wait till I get this on the ground and give it a real good snug, but. To me, I don't see why you can't go as tight as you could with a lug nut on a car, um, which isn't really that tight. People think that's very tight. It's usually only about 60 to 90 foot pounds of torque. I'm probably putting... All right, so my phone cut off, and what I was trying to say is that I only tighten these to about 50 pounds, and I've been having trouble with my phone cutting off because the heat from the sun is heating up my phone. But essentially, you can see I already have the brake on, but what you do is you slide the brake on and you tighten these just a tiny bit and then you back them off to where it's loose. And then what you do is you go grab your brake with one hand and you just tighten it just a tiny bit, a tiny bit, a tiny bit, all the way till you start getting snug and then just keep adding torque. Um, if you find that this part is rubbing on this, you can loosen these up and hold this up with your finger and do the same thing. Tighten a little bit back and forth if this is rubbing on that. But you can see we're good now, no rubbing. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and put the fender on. And then we are finished. So same with everything else, it, definitely on these. I actually would prefer putting red Loctite on these, which I've done in the past, so mine are pretty thick in there anyway. I think I might be out of red Loctite, um, but I'm going to go ahead and put the blue on like everybody else does, but I prefer the red. And I'm going to get these started by hand, I'm not going in with the drill and starting these. I will use the drill to help me. Um, also, you could use an Allen key if you have a Allen key set just to get them started. So you go around. Sure, if you've done a tire change, you've taken this thing off a few times. If you haven't done a tire change, all this will help you with the tire change. Also, because it's chain, it's taking the taking the back wheel off just like the tire chains. I personally think that changing the shock is easier than changing a tire. Um, I have changed a tire on one of these before and it wasn't my favorite thing to do. I'd much rather put these shocks on. So if that helps you have some confidence if you've already had to do a tire change, you own one of these scooters you're probably going to need to do a tire change. I don't even know if you're getting any of this. Okay, I'm just putting screws in, so it's nothing really too exciting. But now that I've got these all started by hand, I'm going to put my clutch all the way down to one, so I'm not going in hard. And I'm 
just going to get all these kind of snug. One thing I did learn with this is if you take your thumb and you press in like this when you tighten these, it will actually bring your fender up a little bit. Some of these fenders are a little bit, I'll show you on this side because I'm about to put this one on. Some of these fenders are really close to the tire and what you can do is you can press in like that and it puts a little bit of flex on this and it actually lifts the, uh, this is the wrong size, I don't, okay, here it is. It will lift the, uh, the fender up. So on this side, I'm gonna come in and bring it down close. I can really just do it with my hand like this with it, with the drill. So I'm gonna snug that. And as I'm holding this, I'm gonna come in. Now on the front, I actually put a uh, small little lock washers here, which I highly recommend. I don't have any more of them. And the front is, you know, you really don't want that fender coming off and getting under you, so definitely make sure I have them on the front. These you want to go pretty tight with without snapping them, though, because um, you don't want these coming off. And I would periodically before a ride, check these fender bolts, have an Allen key ready. Um, you don't want to be twisting them too much because you'll break the Loctite loose, but just make sure they're snug on there. Again, that's why I like using the red Loctite, and some people are like, oh, you're going to have to heat it up. No, you don't have to heat it up if you use the red Loctite. You want to clean, when you get one of these scooters, the first thing you want to do is pull these bolts out and clean all the grease off of them with some alcohol and then um, put Loctite on them and tighten everything down nice and tight and let it sit overnight before you go ride it. Man, that looks so good on here, having the, sorry about the vibration, having this red and that red and just being able to see it. I'm gonna go four clicks because that's what felt good on the front. I've already ridden it with the front. One, two, three, four, and see how that feels. Um, these actually will make it feel stiffer, so if it feels too stiff, you back it off, and if it starts feeling bouncy, you give it more. So plus, actually that's minus, huh? So rebound is actually going like this with these. So I had it backwards, no wonder. It felt kind of, didn't feel that great when I had it turned all the way up. Now, going backwards is actually adding rebound. So I'm going to go four backwards. Four is right in the middle anyway um, because there's about nine clicks. So one, two, three, four. And that should be set about even. But yeah, that's it. All we got to do is glue on the rubber pieces if you like those on there. Um, I actually use black shoe goo because I found it works better than the glue that it comes with. It gets a little bit tackier um, you don't got to put a whole lot on there just you know put some on this side put some on that side inside these just put a little bit of shoe goo in there and pop them on probably want to let them sit overnight and uh yeah that's it that's how to put the the new shocks on one of these looks really good on there it's too bad they didn't come that way or they offer that option